Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Transcending Humanity. This is episode 26. Um, I uh, set our uh, recording for night and nobody showed up. So <clears throat> I guess you're stuck with me. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of topical, I guess, for um, what I'm going to be talking about tonight. I'm going to be talking about voting and running for office and stuff like that. But uh, first off, I wanted to ask people, please, um, if you love the show, please uh, check us out. Check out our website to get a link to our Patreon. Um, right now, the show is all self-funded and could really use um, $5 a month. It's just the price of a coffee. It would go a long way to help keep this show going. Um, anyways, I'm Vanessa. You know me. I wanted to, I guess we're going to have a short episode this week because it's just me and I don't really have anyone to talk to, but um, I wanted to talk a little bit about voting and its importance, especially for people, sorry, I just bumped my desk. If those listening aren't going to be like, what? But those watching be like, why did your camera go crazy? Anyways, it is important for people of my generation um, I am a millennial, technically, I guess I'm an exennial, uh, since I was born in 81. Um, we're kind of the generation that we grew up analog and our adulthoods are uh, digital. So um, our generation is huge. Um, if you listened to last week's episode with Landon Reed, if you haven't stopped this, go listen to that one um, or watch it wherever you uh, get this podcast, but um, he had just some amazing points about how millennials need to step up. Uh, so I wanted to follow up this week uh, with uh, with um, my conversation with Landon from last week. Um, millennials, this episode, I'm looking at you right now. I'm guilty of it too. Uh, before I came out, I just lived the clueless, you know, just typical white guy kind of thing where, oh, it doesn't really impact me. I don't like the kind of candidates. I don't want to buy it, but, 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 but I had all sorts of excuses for not voting. I didn't vote for the first time until I was 40, I believe, um, which is a shame. And I also know it is a pretty common thing amongst my generation. There are many of us, as Lyndon said, um, a lot of uh, Gen Z folks call us millennials, um, like a uh, second generation of boomers or something. I forget exactly what he said, but you know, he's not wrong. There are a lot of us and we could implement so much change, but we're not. And that's a bad thing uh, with the way that our country is kind of sliding into fascism with the Republican party doing what they're doing. Um, if you follow any trans people, um, myself, Liam, Taryn, anybody, um, we say over and over and over again that the Republicans are coming for us now, but we're not going to be the last ones that they come for. So we need some fresh perspectives in our government nationwide from the bottom up. And I mean that when I say from the bottom up, um, the reason it's important to vote is, well, one, it's it's something that it's your right, and a lot of people have fought to do it. And again, I'm guilty of not doing it for a long time. I'm doing it now. Um, but a lot of the people that start off spewing all this vitriol in state uh, government, in federal government, start off low. They s start off simple. They start off in school birds. They start off in... Um, town councils they start off in wards and stuff like that and that's what we have to stop we need more millennials to one get out and vote two run for office i am currently putting my uh I, i'm currently doing what i'm saying that i want to do um in that i have decided to run for the Ohio House of Representatives in my district, which is District 50. It is a ridiculously gerrymandered district. If you look it up, um, you can just do a Google search for Ohio House of Representative district map. 
the gerrymandering here is to the point where if you zoom in, they have like individual houses cut out. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's been deemed to be illegal, but the Republicans have a super majority in Ohio. So there's no one really to stop them, even though the court says that uh, they can't do it. So all that's still pending right now. There's an initiative for citizens to be able to redraw it, but I'm sure the Republicans are going to do everything they can to stop that. <clears throat> so if you get out there, vote for, as I said, start low, vote in your school board, run for your school board. I'm really, I honestly, I'm talking to Democrats here. Republicans, I don't love you. I'm sorry. If you're still re voting Republican this day and age, the, honestly, I feel like you have something morally wrong with you at this point. Um, if you're still voting Republican, I need you to sit back and ask yourself, what is the last thing mm. that the Republican Party did for you? did for mm. the people they're all they do is take things away all they do is give money to the rich and yeah i know i'm sounding like you're far uh, mm. conservatives will call me a far leftist um but really anywhere else in the world i'd be centrist i just want i would like some sort of equality in this country so get out there vote you can start early voting now. I just voted today uh, in Ohio. Um, I like to vote early for a number of reasons, um, even though I have to drive like 25 minutes to, to vote early. But the place where I vote normally is a local church. And every time I go in there, it's very awkward because it is very, I'm in a very red area and a trans girl is kind of a novelty there, but not in a good way. So I just drive out to the Stark County Board of Elections and vote there, and they're very nice, and you're in and out, and wham, bam. So get out and vote. If you have people that want to vote and they're, they have trouble getting transport, please drive them. Um, gather together as a community. We can do this. We need to pave the way for the generations that follow us. A lot of millennials say, and Landon mentioned this last week, and I said I'm guilty of saying it, but... We keep saying, oh, Gen Z will save us. Gen Z will save us. But Landon had a good point when he said, you know, millennials, we're a huge generation. Gen Z isn't nearly as big as us. And we can't count on them to save us. They're already turning out in record numbers to vote. So what are millennials doing? We need to get out there, people. It's just do it. Get out. It doesn't take long. You can even do mail-in voting, whatever you need to do but start making a difference. And I hope that people seeing me running for office will be like, okay, if the 42 year old trans girl from super red Ohio is willing to run in her district to make change, maybe I can too. That's one of the main reasons I'm running is I want to pave the way for other people, other Gen X, Millennials, uh, Gen Z, even Gen Alpha that's coming up. Uh, I want them to see that, okay, there are people of my generation that care, that are willing to take the risk. I'm taking a giant risk. And I'm going to say up front, getting signatures is not easy because it is not safe for me to go door to door uh, to knock. So I have to leverage my network, which has been difficult. And I only have two months to get about 100 signatures. So um, it's going to be an uphill battle, but I want people to see me if I can get on the ballot and be like, hey, I can do that too. That's how we make change. I'm not a politician. I never set out to be in politics. I, I'm running my platform I'm running on. I'm not running on trans rights because that's not going to be popular in my area. Of course, if I'm elected, I will focus on that and I will give the dirtiest of dirty looks to all the uh, anti-trans legislators in Ohio, especially Gary Click. Um, but my platform, I want to appeal to everybody. Um, right now, my, my main thing that I'm looking at is the cost of child care, which per child is, it's just astronomical. You know, Republicans want babies born, but then they don't want anything to do with the kids once they're born. And so we have parents out there that are just absolutely swamped. They don't know what to do because they 
it's either they don't work so they can take care of their kid or they do work and try to find some sort of way to take care of their kid. I was talking to one parent that spends 1400 a month uh, per kid on their child care. In Ohio right now, subsidized child care is only available if you make 145% of the federal poverty level or lower. And that equates to be about $20,000. Yeah, with rent being, you know, at least $1,000 a month, it's how can people afford to live? How can people afford to raise their kids? How can people afford anything? So my goal, I'm not making campaign promises. I do not like the idea of campaign promises because how often are they actually held up? I personally don't like making promises in life because promises are hard to keep. You can't always keep. There's There are things in life that are beyond your control. So I don't want to give a, make a promise that I cannot be sure that I can uh, keep. But my goals are, that is my number one goal is to get child care, subsidized child care available to more Ohioans, to people making under a much uh, higher uh, amount of money. Because, you know, even me, even if I were making $50,000 a year, um, which I'm not, I make about $12,000 a year doing what I'm doing, but um, I wouldn't be able to have uh, my kid in, uh, in daycare without seriously hurting my income if I was able to do it at all so we my goal is to bring money to the people that bring money to Ohio um the Republicans aren't doing that they're just taking rights away my opponent here in District 50 is a guy named Reggie Stoltzfus I don't know how to pronounce his last name but he's a co-sponsor of the bathroom bill which um seeks to ban uh, essentially ban transgender people from bathrooms you know in school bathrooms in ohio from kindergarten all the way up through college so um it's one of those you, you can only use the bathroom of your sex assigned at birth um and so <laughs> i look at this guy and like what is he doing to actually help anybody in this district he's just worried about kids genitals and i'm not worried about that i'm just worried about people so I want to focus on the community. I want to focus on veterans. I want to focus on healthcare. I want to focus on human rights. And I want to be able to reach across the table if I can. Um, I believe I mentioned it in other episodes, but my stepfather, a guy I've never met um, because my mother and I do not get along. I have no interest in uh, speaking with her ever again. Um, but her husband is an Ohio State representative. And I uh, looked up, but he uh, sponsors and co-sponsors, and I was pleasantly surprised. He is a Republican, but nothing that he is involved with has anything to do with taking rights away. It's all just solid economic stuff to help Ohio. So I want to give kudos to Bill Romer, my stepfather. Highly doubt he listens to this, but as he is a Republican that is actually seems to be doing the right thing. Now, I don't know how he's actually voting on issues. Um, if any of these anti-trans things uh, actually get up for vote, I'll be very interested in seeing how he votes. But if he doesn't vote for them and I do get in and do get elected, I would like to work on policy with him. Um, I'm running as a Democrat, but I do not like party politics. I am hoping that in the future the parties get dissolved and we focus more on being a democracy rather than just pleasing one party or the other. I can tell you my experiences with the Democrat Party so far have not been pleasant. Um, I, I mean, I realize I've only been running for about two weeks, but I cannot get a hold of anybody. Um, I went to the Stark County, uh, Stark County's county I live in. I went to their headquarters, the Democratic headquarters, and um, I couldn't even get a phone number for the chairman. They gave, they told me to email him. They didn't even give me his email. Um, I got it offline and contacted him and I've heard nothing. Um, I'm trying to get uh, some signature parties going and I would like the assistance of the Democratic Party and they're just falling short. Um, I reached out to Ohio Democrats, absolutely no word. I uh, reached out to the Ohio House Democratic Caucus. I didn't hear anything from them um, until I got the phone number of the person that leads it. 
And I finally got a hold of him and he sent me a link to fill out a form to show that I'm interested in running. So who knows if anything will come from that, but it, it just goes to show me the Republicans. I do not like Republicans, as you know, but they are much more organized. Um, and Ohio ballot right now is the um, a citizen's initiative to uh, legalize abortion. Um, and the to legalize it, the vote is yes. So most Democrats are voting yes. But the Republicans got way ahead of it because they were the ones that got to decide the issue number and um, whether or not yes or no, it would be uh, put on there. So they had all their signs in advance and there are vote no on issue one signs everywhere around here. And no one can get their hands on vote yes for issue ones. They're very rare. The headquarters keeps running out and it's Democrats are just falling asleep at the wheel. Um, I don't like running as a Democrat, but it, I have to play by the rules. I would much rather just run as an independent but honestly, I need the money from the Democratic Party um, if I do get on the ballot. I have a feeling that a transgender candidate in Ohio is most likely going to make the news. So I'm probably going to get some press um, when and if I get on the on the ballot. And I need the I need the backing of a political party to push through what the Republicans spend because they spend a ton of money on uh, on the elections just. The, the last election where um, the current uh, the current rep uh, got elected in, he ran unopposed, and they still spent a ton of money on him. So, yeah, that's my dilemma. Um, so I guess I'm just going to circle back to my point is get out there, vote, get out there, run for office. It's, I, I know it can be scary. I have no experience in politics, but here I am. I'm going it alone because I have no faith in the Democratic Party to actually help me. But hey, I think I can do this. I want to do this. I want to make a difference. I want to show my generation, Gen X, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, that we can make a difference. If I, just little of Vanessa, can make an inroad into this very red Republican gerrymandered district. I think that it could have a very powerful effect on the rest of the country as a whole to see that a queer woman like me can do this. Um, and whether or not I get elected, my goal is to get on the ballot and go from there. So I'm taking it a step at a time, but it is now voting season. Please get out there. Please vote. And thank you very much. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit all those buttons, send us money on Patreon. I only make $12,000 a year, as I said, and I'm funding the show and it's expensive and I want this to keep going. Um, but it is definitely becoming a, a very heavy financial strain on me right now. So if you are willing and able to help, please do. We'll see you next week.